We will begin in a few moments. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Manil. I'm your host for today. And today we have Kelly Warmington uh, hosting our Knowledge Translation Professional Development in Canada webinar for the month of June, um, presented by the BCKT Community of Practice. Um, before Kelly begins, I'm just going to give her a quick introduction, and then I'll step aside. Uh, for the rest of the webinar. I'd like to remind everyone uh, attending to please mute themselves uh, if uh, they're connecting by the computer or by the phone uh, so that we prevent uh, random ambient noise from everyone's workspaces or homes um, from filtering into our recording. Uh, we will be making a recording of the webinar available, um, both uh, the visuals and the audio. Getting right to it. Um, Kelly Warmington is the Knowledge Translation Pro Program Manager at the Hospital for Sick Children, Sick Kids. Her work focuses on building capacity for knowledge translation, KT, across sick kids. She teaches and consults across the organization. Prior to joining the Sick Kids team, Kelly worked as a clinical researcher at St. Michael's Hospital. She holds degrees in biomedical science, teaching, and adult edu education, and she is a certified project management professional. Her professional interests include chronic diseases, patient education, clear language communication, and innovation. Kelly enjoys photography, running, and reading, and she's a registered yoga instructor. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Manil. Should I just dive in? Um, just before you do, I'd like to give everyone a quick summary of what you'll be um, talking about today. Fabulous. Thank you. As the field of knowledge translation, KT continues to grow and change, so do the professional development opportunities for KT professionals. This webinar will touch on the various KT education opportunities available across Canada and highlight the evolution of the KT training offered at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. Um, welcome, everyone. Take it away, Kelly. Thanks so much, Manil. That was a fantastic introduction. Um, I'm really delighted to be here today, and I was so excited to be invited to share some of the professional development opportunities that I'm aware of and also that we offer here at the Hospital for Sick Children. Okay. So today what we're going to talk about is uh, different professional development opportunities and I thought we could actually just start off by discussing some of the things that you might want to keep in mind when you're choosing TD. So there are all kinds of opportunities. I'm going to share some formal and informal ones with you today and we'll, we'll start off by talking about a variety of considerations and things that you might want to um, ask as you pursue different PD opportunities across the country. Um, so we'll talk about what's out there, we'll talk about what else is out there, so going above and beyond what you might find in a quick Google search, and then I also have a couple of sneak peeks for you for some professional development opportunities that the, the Hospital for Sick Children has in development at this point, which will also be available remotely, so very, very excited about that. And then we'll have uh, some time at the end for Q&A. 
So this is me. Um, I don't have video set up on here because I hear there's a bandwidth issue. So always try to throw in a selfie to say hello. Um, and then that's enough of that. So um, Manel was good enough to introduce me. My, my background is in arthritis research, so I really do come from a clinical um, and an academic background where I, I've been involved in, in some good knowledge translation, some not as good knowledge translation, and I've, I've certainly had a professional development journey myself coming from research and then transitioning into KT. My academic background is in education, and it's a really fantastic bridge as we start to consider um, how do we apply those, those human factors and adult learning principles and, um, and pedagogy across KT activities. And then as Manil was good enough to mention, I'm also a yoga instructor. So just a little bit of background about my context. I'm, I'm really lucky to be well supported and um, in terms of the, the knowledge translation capacity of the hospital for sick children. And the reason that I mention this is because I know that everybody's coming from a little bit different spaces and contexts. And we'll talk about the kinds of things to consider and the type of education that, that you might want to think about depending on how well you how well supported PT is within your organization. So um, as you may or may not know, the hospital is, is quite large. We're located in downtown Toronto, and we have over 10,000 staff, students, and volunteers. And um, as you can see from the numbers of patients that come through the organization, we're, we're a high volume center. And we really are made up of clinical care, learning, and research. And our knowledge translation program, where I sit, um, is, is situated within our learning institute. So one thing that I've noticed across organizations is that KT often sits in different realms. So sometimes it'll sit in a research institute, sometimes it's within communications and public affairs. There's a lot of variety across um, organizations and sectors. And then in addition, there are a variety of different models of KT out there. So some people are an N of one, and they're really running their own show when it comes to the knowledge translation activities of, of a consulting group or a smaller organization. And I would just like to share our model. So we really have a capacity building focus, and we focus on training, consultation, and tool and resource development to support knowledge translation activities. So whether I'm working with researchers and teaching them how to write a KT plan or actually consulting with implementation projects um, on, on the clinical level. Uh, so lots and lots of variety there. And I will actually share a variety of the different training and resource offerings that, uh, that we have available. So let's dive in. Things to think about. So when you're starting to think about what professional development you want to pursue next in this area, there is a huge, huge variety. And it's almost an opportunity for decision paralysis because um, it, there are almost too many questions and you go to any website for any offering and there's all sorts of information available to you. So very first thing, you want to think about your role. So are you a researcher? Are you a research coordinator? Um, are you a KT scientist? So are you studying knowledge translation science or implementation science? Um, are you a knowledge broker or somebody who's in a professional role as a KT expert? Um, I, I would put myself in that category because I don't have an academic mandate. Um, I, I focus on capacity building, and then there are also, you know, roles that don't necessarily have knowledge translation in the title. So there are a variety of educators, communication specialists, and the like that you you want those KT skills. You hone them in your role but you, you may not actually be a KT professional in title. And then there are folks that are also interested in getting into the KT field, so you may not yet be in a KT role. So one thing to consider when, when deciding. And the second thing would be your level of experience. So as I go through some of the offerings that are available to us, um, I, I've I've tried to include who the target audience is, so we can really think about, okay, based on role, based on level of experience, what is it that you, you might want to focus on? Which content areas are good for, for those experienced folks who have on-the-job KT knowledge and what's right for, for people who are coming, say, out of a master's degree and are novice in KT but really interested in the field? 
Um, really, really important, as with any KTE practice, um, thinking about your goal. So there are a variety of different things that you might be trying to achieve. And they can, they can be, it could be all of these, it could be one of them, it could be very specific. And it, it will really depend on what your goal is, where you're going to end up in terms of your um, professional development opportunities. So you can certainly be filling a knowledge gap, and that's a, a great reason to go and seek out KT skills and knowledge. So you might be looking at, um, earlier on, you might be looking at what is knowledge translation, why is it actually important to me. Um, I'm probably preaching to the converted on this one because we're all here for, for a webinar with the, the community of practice. Um, but if you want to delve deeper into something as well, so if you're, if you're interested, say, in implementation or a little bit more on KT theory in order to ground your practice, those are just some examples of, of knowledge gaps. And then there are really specific content areas, certainly, like evaluation of knowledge translation activities, which seem to be in really, really high demand these days. Um, enhancing your KT skills. So when it actually comes to the practice and the different types of KT activities that we can be doing, there are all kinds of opportunities to develop our skills. So um, the, the obvious one to me is certainly KT plan development and, and writing a grant. Um, but it may be much more than that. So you might be looking at facilitating or um, patient engagement, stakeholder engagement. How do you actually put those things into action. And so developing, um, whether it's soft skills or more technical skills, say around KT planning, there are, there are PD opportunities out there for you. Um, becoming a KT leader. So this would apply to those folks that might be more experienced in the field, have lots of KT um, under their belt, and are looking to either champion knowledge translation within a particular um, professional organization within the organization that you work in, so advocating for KT, actually trying to change practice, change policy within your organization, um, or developing a new KT role. So we've been fortunate enough to have really, really keen participants in some of our training courses, and I, I'm always so impressed with the, the work that folks have done to really do a needs assessment across their organization or across their, their sector even, and to find out what are the KT needs and what would a knowledge translation professional role look like? What would that model look like within an organization? Um, you might also be interested in getting into a KT role, so if you're more novice or if you are shifting careers, and um, networking is another one. So we all know that stakeholder engagement and, and partnership and collaboration is absolutely huge when it comes to knowledge translation. And so I would encourage you to think about networking as well as, as a goal. Um, and certainly a question you might want to ask when you look at uh, formal training opportunities, are there networking opportunities? Are there external faculty that you're going to get to learn from? How are you going to learn from other participants, for example, in a, a remote offering versus an in-person offering? So lots to consider there. Another piece uh, that I just wanted to share, so at the Hospital for Sick Children, we've actually developed a knowledge translation mentorship program, which I'll, I'll speak to a little bit later on. It is focused internally right now, but one resource that I wanted to share with you, and I'm very happy to share the actual document, is a, a list of KT learning goals. So as we developed our mentorship program, which is actually only eight to 12 weeks long, and our mentees are only with us for three to four hours a week, we had to be really, really thoughtful about goal achievement. And I thought that this list applied to today. So I've, I've included just the seven different categories that we have on the list, but it, it is actually a comprehensive list of 121 potential learning goals. So the categories that we've included are KT roles and responsibilities, so looking at what kinds of things are you actually accountable for in your knowledge translation role. We also have KT tasks, so getting into what are those day-to-day -day activities that you do as a KT professional. Skill development, so what are some of the things like um, assessing impact or evaluating KT activities, um, networking, engaging stakeholders, um, 
brokering, what, what are those things and, and those areas that you might want skill development in? And then also qualities of knowledge brokers. So I, um, there was some fantastic work done by David Phipps and Sarah Morton. They have an excellent article out that really looks at the qualities of knowledge brokers. And I'll just draw the distinction because it's not competency. It's not about what do you know. It's about how you do it. And they've, they've really pulled out some, some amazing, um, of the uh, amazing skills, amazing, um, Things that you might not think about. So it's really about the qualities of individuals that are in these types of roles and what makes them successful. So uh, the other one would be KT strategies. So thinking about what are those KT strategies that you want to be an expert in, if that's of, of interest. So is it app development? Is it web development? Is it e-learning development? Um, are you interested in, in paper-based education tools? Is it around health literacy, plain language communication? What are some of those things that will um, really round out your skill set? And then also addressing barriers to KT. And I think that this is a huge one. So it's, it's not necessarily about a specific skill. It's being able to recognize some of the barriers, so is it time, is it the cost, is it that people aren't bought in within your organization, and learning to um, address some of those issues in a meaningful way that's going to be context specific. So I'm, I'm really, really happy to receive emails from anybody that's interested. My email um, is at the end of the, the presentation on the Q&A slide. And if you're interested in this list, we've been using, using it to facilitate goal setting for some of our learners. So I'd be very, very happy to share. So the other thing, and we've touched on it already, would be your organization. So if you are situated in an organization, thinking about your sector. So currently, the majority of the knowledge translation education, um, whether it's knowledge exchange, whether it's knowledge mobilization, education that's out there, is situated in the health field. And that's not to say that it's not applicable across sectors, but we've come the furthest in health, I would say, in terms of professional development. Um, that I, I guess the breadth of professional development that's offered. So thinking about sector and thinking about whether or not a formal opportunity is the right fit for you. It may very well be, even if it is um, hosted by a healthcare organization, um, but it may not be. You may be looking at uh, a, deriving a greater benefit from a mentorship opportunity along with a more senior KT person in your um, sector if you are somewhere outside of health. There is also a lot of great literature in agriculture, in education, um, certainly in government at this point as well. So definitely not to say that there isn't anything formal available outside of healthcare. Um, I would also take into consideration your organization's capacity for KT. So there may or may not be a dedicated KT individual. You may or may not have a KT program or KT services, um, and as I said, we really focus uh, at Sick Kids on capacity building. So um, as opposed to my doing the KT planning or the KT grant writing for people, I really do a lot of training and a lot of support service delivery in order to get people doing the KT more independently over time. And so the, the capacity for KT within your organization is a big one. And, and this I'll, I'll definitely relate back to this when we talk about some of the sneak peeks, because we do have a resource coming out that relates to, to organizational capacity and, and the buy-in and the infrastructure that's there to support you. Um, and then also, where, where on the spectrum are you? So is your organization kind of at the, the, the what is KT? Like, I, who, who, who is this? What are we doing? Um, or is it, is it a strategic priority? So I think a lot of organizations are in a lot of different places on the spectrum. Um, and it, it may not be quite as linear as I've depicted here as well. Um, certain groups may be really well supported to do certain types of KT activities, um, say like policy development in public health, but they may not be as, as well supported in terms of, say, plain language communication to um, the, the general public. So lots of, of different potential there. Um, so I just wanted to share a couple of examples of, of this. 
Uh, so I pulled this from the Interior Health website, and they've actually um, kind of, I'll say, called out knowledge translation in one spot on their uh, kind of strategic map. So this focuses on the, the mission and vision. And the piece that I've pulled out here is around delivering evidence-informed quality and safety initiatives and to pursue zero never events. So um, I can't say that knowledge translation is explicit in this document, but as I read through most of the bullet points, I would say that it's implicit. Um, whereas I wanted to call out on the, the knowledge, or excuse me, the, um, the Sick Kids Strategic Map, we actually have research translated to practice as one of our stakeholder values listed at the top of our um, strategic map. So granted, we're an organization of 10,000 people. I'm sure there are people across this organization that have no idea that my program exists. <laughs> um, and I think that really speaks to the silos across many organizations. But as a first step, right from the leadership level, I am supported from the strategic, um, the strategic level within the organization. And, and as I said, uh, knowledge translation fits within uh, our, our learning portfolio. So definitely a variety, and sometimes knowledge translation is not top down. Sometimes it doesn't come from leadership, sometimes it's, it's from the ground up within an organization, and I've seen that be very successful as well. So let's let's talk about what's out there for you. So um, there are a number of knowledge translation hubs, I would say, across the country, uh, one of which would be KT Canada. So there are certain offerings that I'm going to speak to today that I can talk uh, about in, in a little bit more detail and some in a little bit less detail. So um, I, I've tried to include screenshots and links and additional details about who the target audience is and what the focus is of these various offerings. So the KG Canada seminar series is offered by webinar and I believe they are monthly. So I wanted to just make a note, if you are already a member or on KG Canada's mailing list, they do actually have a new website. So it's kgcanada.org. I believe they've shifted away from the .ca resource. It is still existing but the .org site actually has the newer resources. And they actually have all of their seminar series um, archived, so you can take a look at them. I will say that KT Canada's work, from my understanding, focuses much more on knowledge translation science. So if you are a KT scientist, if you are doing research that focuses on methodologies and knowledge translation, this is the place for you. They have a number of other offerings that are um, different levels of, um, I guess for different levels of trainees and faculty. So the Summer Institute is a three-day program. Um, I have not participated in this one myself, but I think that it's, it's a really practical opportunity for more junior folks, so graduate students, postdocs, um, fellows and junior faculty, and it's for those that are really studying KT. So it's focusing on research skills that are going to support you as a KT scientist, okay? And these are actually hosted in Toronto. Uh, KT Canada also offers an end of grant KT course, and this is a half day offering, which is really, really targeted, focusing on end of grant knowledge translation. So. Um, whether you're a scientist, trainee, researcher, et cetera, a research coordinator, if you are involved in that front end of writing grants, uh, this offering is a really great opportunity because it, it's actually practical. So you actually work with your own grant and develop an end of grant KT plan. So you come away with that um, product at the end of this course, okay? Um, another knowledge hub that I would highly recommend taking a look at is the Institute for Knowledge Mobilization. And this group is um, out of Ottawa. And so one of the offerings that I did want to share with you is around, is their summer school. So this is what, this is the screenshot that I've pulled. And the summer school is, again, a three-day offering. They usually offer it every year. And I would say that the summer school is more for junior um, K 
KT folks as well. So this doesn't necessarily have to be KT scientists. I think there are opportunities. They have a variety of different faculty. So when I spoke to that networking opportunity, this is absolutely one of them. And they actually, I believe, host the course in different locations every year. So I think different universities actually host the, the physical location. And it, it is an in-person course. Um, just actually, just before I move on, um, the, the Institute for Knowledge Mobilization, I'll be referring back to them in a moment, but I just wanted to mention as well that they also have a lot of really excellent resources on their website. So um, you can see here they have events listed, different workshops, um, the Knowledge Mobilization Forum, which I'll speak to later, and I, I just, it's a great great site to keep an eye on, um, to, to bookmark and see what kinds of offerings are coming up. There are also often remote offerings, so different webinars and um, online opportunities that you might be able to take advantage of. Another online opportunity, if implementation is where you are focusing or if it's an area that you want to do a little bit of uh, skill development, um, build your knowledge. This resource is actually on the Center of Excellence for Child and Youth Mental Health. And they have a series of eight different modules. Um, in my screenshot, they're cut off, but there are actually eight under implementation that look at the different components of effective implementation. So less so the knowledge translation and, and making your evidence ready for use, but when you actually have that evidence-based intervention, you've developed your KT strategies and you're moving to implementation in a specific context, these modules are for you. So um, there's an introductory module and then it goes into specific processes like needs assessment and monitoring and evaluation, really paralleling the knowledge to action cycle. Okay? So I've included the link there and these are online modules that are freely available. So the Certificate in Knowledge oh. the Institute for, for Knowledge Mobilization. Um, the, the, this particular certificate is offered in collaboration, so between the University of Ottawa and the Institute for Knowledge Mobilization. And I didn't include the link because it was really long, so I actually just suggest uh, Googling Certificate in Knowledge Mobilization. Um, this one, or sorry, Knowledge Management, and I know we throw a lot of terms around in the KT world, so we use Knowledge, knowledge Mobilization, Knowledge Exchange, Knowledge Translation, etc. Um, knowledge Management, I would traditionally think of more as the flow of information within a particular system, so not necessarily focusing on the evidence. However, if you actually take a look at the, the definitions and who this particular offering is for, it's definitely applicable, I think, to this group. So looking at the list, knowledge brokers, analysts, researchers, communication managers, really, really broad. And then I've included a list of the core courses that are required because I think that helps to, to make a decision about, you know, do I actually want to go look at their website? Um, so translating research into policy and practice, there's definitely a policy focus here. So there's an intro and an advanced course. Um, Results-based management and then effective management of project stakeholders. And I think that that stakeholder piece is a really, really nice area of focus in this particular offering. Um, and these are uh, full semester courses, I believe, and it is five courses to complete the certificate. So moving to the, the Sick Kids offerings, I wanted to share some of the training that, that we have available, and I can speak to these ones probably in the most, most depth. Um, so the Scientist Knowledge Translation Training course is a, a two-day initiative that was really developed to address the requirement for a KT plan. So as funding opportunities started to shift across Canada and a knowledge translation plan was required, this training was developed to, to meet that need and to offer a really practical opportunity to say, okay, what is KT? Why is it important? How do we actually develop a plan? And how do we communicate that plan? So the course over time has evolved. So I would certainly say that it goes beyond just scientists. Um, I know that's in the name and that's how it's been branded, but it's really a, a comprehensive KT 101. So the, the knowledge translation course we offer twice a year, and it's for researchers, clinicians, educators, and certainly professionals across sectors. So we do have folks from 
government, military, education, um, and, and certainly across the health field, um, whether research or not, that take the course and benefit from it. So the modules that we offer now in this particular training session are um, toward an understanding of knowledge translation. So as I said, it really is an introduction. And whether or not you have some experience in KT, even the foundational content can be really nice to get everybody onto the same page and talk about what are all the terms we use, what are the different definitions, where did they come from, which ones are the most relevant in your setting. We also talk um, in a fair bit of depth about research communications. So we focus on uh, clear language communication, so working on things like lay abstracts, lots of practical opportunities there. We focus on social media and working with the media also uh, as, a, as a way of communicating with the general public. So how do you build those linkages and, uh, and leverage existing communication strategies? And then also developing and evaluating a knowledge translation plan. So really, really important. Um, and probably one of the things that um, the majority of, of folks who are interested in, in getting into the field or honing their skills are interested in. And we, um, we certainly share the knowledge translation planning template, which I'll show you an image of later on, as a planning tool that we get into. And we actually give you some opportunity to discuss your work with your, your colleagues in the course, and then also some time to start developing a plan. Um, so the next offerings of these particular training sessions are August of this year. Registration will actually be opening this month. And then we have a course coming up in January. And I also wanted to make a note that we do offer a one-day version of the course that's um, distilled down a little bit, a bit of a different focus, but still very practical for graduate students. And this training uh, will be offered next in um, May of 2017. So we do only offer that one uh, once a year, but it's to make knowledge translation education a little bit more accessible to, to graduate students and certainly to, um, to postdocs and very recent grads as well. And then the Knowledge Translation Professional Certificate. So um, thinking through that spectrum that I showed you around being uh, a little bit more expert or being a novice in KT, um, and then also what is your role. So the, the Knowledge Translation Professional Certificate is geared towards knowledge translation professionals. So KT managers, KT brokers, um, if you are actually working on a specific project, um, research or otherwise, this is, this is the right fit. So this course really came out of a needs assessment that was conducted across the country. So it's been developed and adapted over time based on a comprehensive course evaluation to meet the needs of today's KT professionals. So there was, was formerly nothing available at this um, more advanced level. And what we found in terms of format was that practitioners were interested in an intensive. So this is a five-day course. Um, we offer it three times a year. It is done in a one-week time period, and it's formally accredited by the University of Toronto. So that was also desirable to folks who are interested in asking for support from their organizations to, um, to foster their KT abilities. And organizations also really like some of the practical aspects of the course that I'll, I'll touch on in a moment. So the course includes 12 different modules, as I said. Um, these competencies and areas of focus were informed by KT professionals across the country. We have nine different faculties that actually take the, or that teach the course, excuse me. So it's a nice opportunity, again, to, um, to network and to learn from people with a variety of experience. It's not just one person's perspective. There is a blend of theory and practice. So the beginning of the week is a little bit more heavy on theory, and then later in the week we focus on practical application. How do you use the skills that you've learned to develop a KT plan? And that's the practical piece that, that organizationally is often very well supported. So you do um, get dedicated time throughout the course to develop a KT plan based on a project that you are working on. And you have an opportunity to share that plan for feedback and for input from your peers and also from the faculty on the last day of the course. Um, there's also a networking dinner with faculty and participants, and there's um, 
supervisor and mentor involvement. So this isn't a requirement, but we really try to support organizational capacity for KT and, and becoming a KT-friendly organization. So it's one thing to sign off and say, sure, yeah, this, this individual can go to the course. It's another thing for a supervisor to call in on the last day, listen to the KT plan presentation, and be involved in a different way and provide some feedback. Um, and this also supports implementation of that plan when you go back to your organization. We also have an alumni panel discussion, so you can talk to people that have been through the, the KT course and to talk about what they've done with it. And then you do also get a formal certificate from U of T, which was um, noted as desirable from professionals across the country. So the next offerings for this particular course, and this one is hosted in Toronto here at SickKids, or September 19th to 23rd of this year. Applications will be uh, available this month. So um, whereas registration for the two-day course is first come, first serve, this one is based on an application process. Um, if you are interested in applying, you're very, very welcome to send me an email. I would be happy to hear from you. And I can certainly add you to our communication list and we'll let you know as soon as applications are available. And then we do have offerings scheduled for um, March of 2017, uh, June of 2017, and we do also have a fall offering scheduled. So if you're planning ahead or looking looking towards the next fiscal year for funding, um, I just wanted to share those dates. And we've gotten some, some really fantastic feedback about the course. So one thing that really sits well with me is the fact that folks have said they've come away with skills and not just knowledge. So it's not just uh, a didactic course, it's very, very practical. And you're coming away with a huge laundry list of resources, but also um, a, a practical KT plan that you've had an opportunity to apply in a supported environment. And this is just a, a picture of some of our participants playing the KT game as well, which is a really fun tool and also, I would say, another um, PD opportunity. So if you are um, going to be teaching any knowledge translation, the KT game is a, a great opportunity. And I have a slide on that later if you're interested in, in looking into it. So beyond some of the formal training opportunities that are available, and I've shared some for, for more novice KT folks, some for more experienced, some remote, and some in, in person, I wanted to share a few things that are, are a little bit outside the box when we think about um, traditional classroom um, PD. So the Knowledge Translation Exchange Community of Practice, uh, many of you may be aware of this, but I always like to highlight their work. Um, they do offer a number of um, in-person and also broadcast resources. So I actually just wanted to highlight the one that's coming up. So this particular one, what kind of knowledge mobilizer are you? And I think, I think this is actually perfect timing because a lot of what I've talked about around goals and what, what is it that you're trying to develop further will be um, addressed, I would say, in this, in this content. So Vicki Ward will actually be offering this session and uh, it's a, a two hour session and the first component of it, so part one, will actually be broadcast by a webinar. So you might want to take a look at that one on the KTE COP and there are all kinds of resources on there, um, as you may know as well. Uh, you can certainly add yourself to the mailing list. Um, here is the KT game. So the knowledge translation game really came out of the development of the knowledge translation planning template. And this is the 13-step the resource that we offer and that my, my colleague Melanie Barwick developed to really support researchers and, and others in developing KT plans. So the KT game is a really fantastic way to either teach KT planning, so that's something that you do in your role if you are an educator, a KT um, teacher or facilitator, the KT game is an excellent resource. Um, or if you're actually developing a knowledge translation plan, there are a series of different types of audience groups, knowledge translation strategies, and, and planning tips that you can actually work through using the game. Another one is the Knowledge Mobilization Forum. So the fifth annual forum is actually coming up and um, not as accessible in DC. This one is, is hosted in Toronto, but each successive event is hosted in a different city across the country. 
country. So uh, I believe that the next couple may be a little bit closer to the East Coast. You might want to take a look at the website. The one this year is focusing on systems and sustainability. And even if it's not something that you can physically get to, there are all kinds of resources and a certain year report that actually comes out of each forum. So after the June uh, event, there will be a report made available on the Knowledge Mobilization um, or Institute for Knowledge Mobilization website and all of the proceedings and a variety of different resources that have been developed in collaboration with attendees will be made available. So really great opportunity if you're looking to do some, some independent learning. The forum is also really fantastic. It's a two-day event, and if it's something that you can get yourself to or that you've been to in the past, um, it does continue to grow. So this is the fifth annual event, and there's a different theme every year, and we're, we're really focusing on um, engagement and interactivity. So we have lots of practical workshops this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. I sit on the planning committee for this event, and um, really, really excellent broad representation. It's actually internationally um, attended, which is really fantastic when it comes to learning from one another in the field. Uh, the Global Implementation Conference is coming up also in Toronto next year. So again, if this is something that you can put on your um, professional development plan or on a roadmap to, to get support to come to, this is a two-day event that will actually be hosted in Toronto, part of it here at SICKIS, um, the, the initial education day, and then the actual conference on the 20th and 21st of June next year. So basically, we're, we're one year out. And this one is nice, again, because it is also global. So you get the uh, international representation and certainly representation across sectors. And then some other professional development options that go beyond training and conferences. Um, mentorship is a really excellent opportunity, and there are a lot of different models of mentorship. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a formal senior person, junior person, um, ongoing mentorship relationship. There can be lots of different types of mentorship, and I think we're starting to see a bit more of this in the KT field. So in Toronto, a couple of our partners, we've started to do shadow days. So this is actually a nice opportunity for folks from different organizations or students to spend a day or a half a day with another organization to see what their model of knowledge translation looks like. And if that's something you're interested in or you'd like to know a little bit more about how we're facilitating that, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, networking, also really, really important. So using um, LinkedIn, certainly leveraging any of the groups that, that are available. So I think, um, so for example, we have a, a public group that's available to uh, graduates of our, our two-day training. You actually don't have to have taken the training yet in order to become a member, but if you want to stay up to date on updates, post questions, um, offer yourself up as a volunteer, et cetera, it, it's a really nice opportunity to reach a group of fellow KT professionals or folks who are interested in, in kind of like-minded individuals. Um, collaboration can be a really great learning opportunity as well, and um, partnerships can also help to facilitate learning. So these usually have to be uh, a little bit more formalized, but I, I've been part of a number of different networks and partnerships that I've found to be very, very beneficial. Um, other ones are, are keeping, keeping your eye on newsletters and mailing lists. So um, Institute for Knowledge Mobilization, KG Canada, um, Knowledge Translation Community of Practice all have options where you can get push um, messages. So you don't actually have to be going back to their website all the time to look at the resources or the training opportunities that are offered. You can get yourself onto those lists so that that information is coming directly to you. 
And then another opportunity is volunteering. So this doesn't necessarily have to be long-term volunteering. It can be um, spending a little bit of time with a, a KT professional in their role, certainly over time, but it can also be at events. So something like the Knowledge Mobilization Forum or other conferences, um, opportunities to, to offer your services, usually you also get to benefit from a lot of the learning that's available at those events. So I do, I do recommend looking into those. And then I just have a couple of sneak peeks for you. So um, one is the Knowledge Translation Casebook that I mentioned earlier. So we're actually building a casebook um, in collaboration with folks from a number of different types of organizations and across sectors who have graduated from our five-day course about building organizational capacity for KT. So we're focusing on different types of models. What does it look like when you're that individual in an organization and you're trying to advocate for KT? What does it look like when you are working on a specific project and you're situated within um, a communications department? What does it look like when you are an independent consultant working in KT, how do you build that business? And so it's going to be really, really broad, and there will be a variety of chapters um, that ideally folks in KT roles or um, with an interest in building some of that infrastructure and capacity can then leverage. So if you are um, part of KT leadership, then this might be a really excellent resource for you. And then another one that I wanted to share as well is some KT e-learning that we're developing. So this is a bit of a gap. Um, I would say that there, there are those modules around implementation, but generally there aren't, I, I would say, enough remote offerings given the, the presence of e-learning in today's society. So we are trying to address that gap. I'm really, really excited to be able to share this with you. And we're going to have two modules to start um, launching this fall. So I've included a, just a screenshot of our knowledge translation planning template. This is a resource that if you're interested in uh, leveraging, if you haven't yet had an opportunity to work with it, I've included the link directly to Melanie Barwick's website. Um, but the, the actual e-learning offering will be um, an introduction to knowledge translation, which you can use in the moment, um, or it could be pre-learning for, for different types of training that you might be uh, interested in. And then the second one will actually be almost a how-to guide of how to work with the KT planning template. So really, really practical opportunity. Um, say you've taken some KT training in the past or you haven't done any formal training, this is, is really a performance support tool to say, okay, I need to write a, a grant or I need to develop a practical KT plan in the next week, week and a half, I'm gonna use this e-learning module and that's gonna be my go-to. And they will actually be very concise, very learner-centered and um, really give you the opportunity to pick and choose the pieces that you need to help you develop that plan. So we're really, really excited about that. And that's it for me. So I would love to hear um, any questions that you might have. Um, and as I said, I'm very, very happy to hear from, from anybody who's interested in more detail about any of the offerings that I've talked about. So thank you. Thanks, Kelly. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Yeah, well, now is uh, Q&A time. Um, so as we get started, I'd like to uh, offer the floor to anybody who, while listening, has thought of questions that they might want to ask Kelly uh, that she may not have spoken enough about or may have not uh, spoken directly to during the presentation. Um, this is an open, open floor at this point. Uh, and please feel free to unmute yourselves when you do this. Kelly, um, no, if people are not taking, uh, uh, not going to um, ask anything just yet, I thought I wanted to ask a little bit about um, what are things, because, because you spoke a lot about the range of professional development opportunities that are available, everything from online resources to courses that range from half a day to three days or more. And I'm wondering what should people be considering when they look at this, this, uh, this range of options when, and when picking one for themselves? 
Right. Um, so I think there are the personal aspects that I that I spoke to at the beginning of of this session. Um, so certainly, what are your goals? What is it that you're you're actually trying to get out of it? But from a practical standpoint, the other things to consider are the cost, um, and that's not just the cost of the offering, but certainly what what all it would take you to get there. Um, Think about your learning style. So are you actually going to benefit from um, online modules? Are you an in-person type learner? Do you need to be working with um, in-person faculty, with peers, et cetera? Um, and then also whether or not you're supported by your organization. So I think it's very different to take a, a professional development course or to pursue an opportunity based on your own development interests and also to um, to take a course for development that relates to your organization. So it's not then just what you need to get out of it, it's what they need to get out of it. And how are you actually going to take that learning back to, to your organization? Of course. Does that, does that help? Yes, yes it does. Uh, I mean, you mentioned the, the what the employers may want from the KT professional, I'm wondering what kind of financial support may employers provide if if someone wants to take one of these courses that may be, be a bit expensive to spend on out of pocket. Yep. Um, so I've definitely seen the range. So, uh, for example, the the one day course that we offer for grad students that's the reason that we developed that one was because the cost of some of the other two and five day trainings were prohibitive for an individual. Um, but I've seen many organizations right across the spectrum, so public health, government, um, large, small organizations that will fund um, professionals to take the course and also support them to come to Toronto. So we've had participation not only within Canada, but also internationally. So we have regularly folks come from Australia uh, and, and other areas. So I, I actually do see a question here in the comments box um, that is asking about the cost of the one week course. So um, the courses that we offer, uh, the two day course is $700 Canadian and that one um, includes, so that cost is inclusive. That includes meals, HST, um, all of the course resources that would um, that you would need. And then the five day course is $2,300, which is competitive um, for, for similar courses or courses that are offered um, within the uh, public sector. And again, that's inclusive. So it includes all of the different uh, resources that you get from the training, um, meals throughout the week, um, the networking dinner that I mentioned, and also um, the certificate from U of T. Okay. Um, so I, I've definitely seen people either funded fully for, for something like that um, or certainly funded uh, to go to conferences as well. And I've seen no funding, I've seen partial funding, I've seen full funding. Yes, partial funding can, can be very helpful sometimes. I, uh, mm -hmm. I did the Institute for Knowledge Mobilization course last year and yep. they did it in Guelph. Mm -hmm. and my employment fund is part of it, but the rest of it that I paid for was was absolutely worth it. Meals were great, and the people I met all over all over the board, not just in health, just yeah. across everything. Absolutely, and I think the the benefit from I mean, this is my bias, but I think the benefit from doing some of the in in person training is. Um, absolutely incredible. I know that it, you know, there can be access issues there, but if you can get yourself um, to, to an in-person training, it's totally worth it. Um, and so I, related to that, um, I do see another question here just about the instructors of the training that we offer. So I mentioned that we have nine faculty and um, experts in different areas. So for the five-day course, just I'll do really, really high-level summary. I'm conscious of the time. Um, Melanie Barwick is one of the faculty and she teaches a lot of the foundational content and focuses on implementation. Um, I do the session on plain language and really focusing on a broad range of uh, uses. So whether it's lay summaries or um, patient and, and family communication, whether it is working with policymakers and making sure that, that content is accessible. Um, we also have um, 
two communication specialists from our team here at SickKids that talk about social media and media safety strategies. We have um, uh, Dr. David Phipps, who teaches about commercialization and tech transfer. Um, Catherine Parker from Holland Blue Review Kids Rehab, who is an absolute specialist and expert in evaluation, so looking at evaluation of your KD activities. Um, and a, a number of the other faculty um, kind of come in and out depending on the content areas that we cover in any given session. Um, we also cover policy. Dr. Ron Saunders, who um, used to work in government at the ADM level, comes and speaks to us about uh, engaging with policymakers and how to do that effectively. Um, and uh, Heather Bullock, also from uh, CAMH, um, speaks to partnerships and networks. So I, I apologize if I'm missing anyone and if any of the faculty end up seeing this in any form. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's helpful. It was, definitely. Um, there are a few questions that I do see in the comments on the side, but in the interest of keeping on time, I'd like to suggest that if we haven't gotten to your question, please do feel free to message them to us. Or Kelly, would they be able to message them directly to you? Absolutely. Please feel free to send me an email. Fantastic. That, that's great to hear. Um, I'd like to... Before before we kind of wrap up, I just wanted to thank you very much for um, presenting at our webinar today. It was uh, it was fantastic to hear about all of these strategies for professional development at what we do. Thank you so much for inviting me, Manila. I appreciate your help, and um, thank you for the the wonderful introduction at the beginning. And I would just thank everyone for their uh, their attention and uh, contributions at the end here. I appreciate the questions. Fantastic. Um, and right before we finish, uh, I'd like to mention that there is another webinar as part of this year's series. Um, it will be, the next webinar will be titled um, Island Health Collaborative Knowledge Translation Activities, Bringing Research into Practice. So in this webinar, participants will learn about the collaborative knowledge translation activities that are increasing the production and use of evidence in decision making and policy setting at Island Health. Um, that will be the next webinar and you will probably hear more about it if you're subscribed to our mailing list. Um, I think that's it from me. Kelly, uh, is there any anything else you'd like to say? Um, no, nope, not from my end. I'll look forward to hearing from uh, from folks with questions or um, if you have any inquiries about any of the training or resources that I mentioned. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being available post-webinar. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Um, this webinar will be available as a recording in a few days. Um, you will probably receive an email when it's up. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.